guys, and welcome to Exploring Real Numbers. Okay, we have previously discussed our real numbers, and we have two categories, our rational and irrational. We're going to jump in with number one. We have the fraction 5 eighths. And if you remember that we talked about before, whenever we have a fraction, if it can be written as a fraction, as long as it does not have a, a goofy number such as pi in it, it's a fraction, it's going to be a rational number. So you're going to put rational in that first box, and then to justify, you can also say if you were to change that fraction to a decimal, it would be 625 thousandths. And so our justification is that it is a fraction, and it's also a decimal that stops. You notice that that decimal is 0.625. It stops. It does not keep going. It does not have a dot, dot, dot after it. Okay, on to number two. Number two is square root of seven. Now, when you try to simplify this, remember your square roots. You're trying to think of two numbers multiplied together to give you a seven. And I can't think of two numbers, two even numbers, that would uh, you would multiply these together to get seven. So this one's going to be irrational. And if we were to go ahead and uh, type this into a calculator, you're going to get a crazy number, and it's going to be 2.6457513111. But then it keeps going. It has a dot, dot, dot. It's not done. It does not stop. And it does not repeat. Okay, remember on this one, the decimal does not stop, and it does not repeat. Okay, now let's carry on to the next page. All right, choose the numbers in each list that are irrational numbers. If all the numbers in a list are rational numbers, write none. Okay, so irrational. We're looking at the ones that do not come out even, they do not repeat. Um, if you ever see pi, you know that pi is irrational. Okay, so let's start. Number three, we have square root of 81. Will that simplify? Yes, it will. Square root of 81 is 9. Okay, and then the next one is 4 squared. That just means 4 times 4, which is 16. And then the decimal number, we have 5 and. Notice that you have 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, and it's a repeating decimal. Okay, a repeating decimal is, in fact, rational. And then the last one is three-sevenths. It's a fraction. So our answer to this one would be none. None of these are irrational. Okay. All right. We're going to go back through number three, and we're going to, to reiterate that square root of 81 is rational because it simplifies to 9. 9 is a rational number, okay? And 4 squared is also rational because it simplifies to 16. Um, your decimal number is rational because it's a repeating decimal. And then 3 sevenths is also rational because it is a fraction. On to number four. Okay, let's look at the first one. We have square root of eight. Okay, square root of eight, when we try to simplify this, this will not uh, simplify. You do not have two numbers that you multiply that come up to exactly eight. Okay, it's going to be two and something whenever you um, simplify this one. So this one is an example of an irrational number because there is no perfect square. Okay, uh, square root of 9. Square root of 9 is 3, so that one is rational. And square root of 10, can you think of a perfect square for it? I cannot, so it is irrational. Okay, however, 2.1 or 2 and 1 tenth, it is rational because it the decimal stops. Okay, 
its stock, so it is rational. So you have two answers on that one. It would be square root of 8 and square root of 10. Okay, let's go to the next page. We have um, number five. It says put each list in order from least to greatest. Represent each set on a number line. Well, the first thing that we want to do with each of these is get these as simple as we can. Okay, and we need to review, uh, or, or we have already reviewed square root of 49. Square root of 49 is, write that underneath it, 7. Remember, 7 is a rational number. Okay, the next one that you have, all right, the next one is pi, and pi is approximately 3 and 14 hundredths. So you could put 3.14 dot, dot, dot. Okay, it is a, an irrational number, but we're going to say it's about 3 and uh, 14 hundredths. The next one's negative 3. Do not forget that negative sign. Okay, when I look at that, I know that that's going to be my smallest one when I'm putting it on a number line. And then you have 5 and 5 tenths. Okay. Okay, now we have a number line drawn. We're going to go ahead and plot these points on the number line. And we'll just start with uh, the first one, uh, square root of 49, which we said is 7. And then the next one is approximately 3 and 14 hundredths. So it's going to be a little bit further than 3. And the third one is negative 3. So remember that means we go to the left of the, equal, of the 0. And then 5 and 5 tenths. And that's going to be between 5 and 6. Uh, not, not exactly between 5 and 6, but it's going to be 5 and 5 tenths, which is... Uh, just a little bit beyond five. Okay. Okay, let's go to number six. If we, When we look at number six, all of these are in decimal form except for that fraction negative four and one half. We're going to change that to a decimal, do that right above it, um, and that is negative four uh, and five tenths, negative four and a half. Okay, now go ahead and draw a number line. Okay, the first one that we need to plot is 35 hundredths. Okay, so this is going to be less than 1. It's in between 0 and 1. It's not even as much as a half, a little bit less than a half. So we're going to plot that point first. Um, the next one is negative 4 and a half negative 4 and 5 tenths. Okay, and this is going to go further down than negative 4. And the next one is negative 1. So negative 1, you're going to have a point right on that. And then we have 3 tenths. Hmm. Now this one, you're going to have to do a little thinking because we have 0.35 and 0.3. And sometimes I like to line those up uh, just set them on top of each other to see which one is larger. And the way that I do it is they have the three in common, so I mark out the three, and then we're looking at the zero and the five. The five is bigger, so your .35 is going to be a larger number. So you're going to plot .3 to the left of .35. Excellent. Or make it too long. All right, then number seven, we have zero. Zero is pretty obvious. We know where that's going to be on the number line. Um, then we have negative one and one third, negative square root of four, and positive square root of four. So let's go ahead and simplify that negative square root of four. Negative square root of four, square root of four is two, so that's going to simply be negative two. And then square root of 4 is going to be a positive 2. And I think with this, we can go ahead and graph this without even changing it to a decimal. What do you think? Okay, so let's draw our number line.
All right, let's start with that difficult one. Zero, where does zero go? Okay, the next one, negative one and one third. We know we're going to go over left to the negative one, and we know it's a little bit further. And if you go between negative one and negative two and cut that into three parts, it's just going to be the first part. So negative one and one third. Okay, the next one is negative two. Negative two should be easy to find, and it's negative square root of four. And then the last part of that, square root of four, which is two. And there you have it. You have it on a number line. This concludes your lesson for today, and you will have a mini quiz tomorrow. Good luck, and see you soon.